Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, folks. Welcome to another episode of Spillwig Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. We are going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do the usual disclaimers and a bit of a rant. So I'm on the new medication. Medication works great, but the last caller was a Karen from hell. Who was making demands on both Wayfair and City. But I want this fixed with my card right now. I don't want to wait three to four days. And, and I've been at this at hours. And you need to fix it or get it to somebody who can. That's the point, sweetheart. Nobody can. You have spoken to literally every single department in both City and Wayfair. We have told you repeatedly that you are going to have to wait. The item was actually quoted, which allows them to hold the current sales price on the items for the next seven days. Well, I want to know what you're going to do to make it right, ma'am. You know, folks, we understand the frustration that you have with the internet services. Believe me, we get it. You need to understand that there are such things as glitches. We are sales folks and banking folks, not tech. The only thing we can do is put in a tick for tech to look at it. Screaming at us and making impossible demands that we do not have the capacity to fulfill, even if we were in the mind to, it's not going to happen. Screaming and going full Karen on people is not going to always get you what you want because sometimes the folks you're going full Karen on don't have the capacity to give you exactly what you want. All right. Life sucks. Deal with it. Wear a jock strap. I don't know, but you stop bitching at the poor people who are trying to help you. Okay, rant over. I'm just I have to mask a lot in my job, folks. Doing call center sales or even call center customer service does not give us the best picture of humanity, all right? It's going to make me less likely to go out and socialize, not more, just in case, you know, anybody's wondering. All right, folks, to the disclaimers, if you're unfamiliar with the Stomp the Shocks campaign or the campaign against the troubled teen industry, you're going to find all the pertinent links right there in the description box. Please, in particular, take note of the article written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by Autistics for Autistics. In it, they interviewed over 800 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's so-called Behavior Modification Program. The Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read that article so much. They threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit. They did not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic refused. You know the drill, folks. Please read the article. Share on all your social media. Also included is Neuroclastic's public statement regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding, just in case the JRC actually does see through with their threat. Trigger warning one, when we discuss places like the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center or Agape Boarding School for Boys, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with mental health issues and disabled people being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please make sure to utilize the headphones. Trigger warning two, this channel is marked not for kids for a reason. We do use profanity on occasion and speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and they are watching this, very obviously, folks, parental supervision is very much advised. Now, where we left off the other day. Comment 51. 
labeling and correcting or eliminating risks. Some comments argue that the risk associated with ESDs for SIB or AB can be corrected or eliminated through labeling and other controls, such as labeling and process JRC currently uses prior to using ESDs on an individual. Oh, Jesus Christ. Explain to me like I'm five how adding in quote unquote other controls and proper laboring labeling is going to protect someone who's getting shocked just below the lethal limit multiple times. Please explain it to me like I'm five. Okay. Those risks are not going to be eliminated because we label it better and we added in better controls. You want to know why? Because it is still set to just below the lethal limit and you're still shocking them multiple times a day. Which means all the risks and all the things we have proven have taken place with that device are still going to happen. So how is this protecting anyone? I'm going to need you to put down the crack pipe. Anybody within the medical model who believes that just by proper laboring, labeling and controls, we, we could totally eliminate the risk, I'm going to need you to set the crack pipe down and start backing away slowly. Okay? Proper labeling of the device is not going to change how much power output it has. Changing the labeling is not going to change the fact that that device is known to give second and third degree burns. Labeling the device better is not going to stop it from shocking just below the lethal limit someone while they're trying to sleep in the most formative years of their life where sleep is vital to growth and healthy development. Labeling fixes nothing. Nothing. But, but, but if we have some more specific for what we can shock them for, or, 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 and hear me on this, you can take it straight from the mouth of Gen X, we can wrap our brains around the fact that corporal punishment does not usually end up in permanently changed behavior. Okay? For God's sake, look at the neurotypicals of my generation. We are we are some of the most self-destructive, reckless, insane bunch of folks that, well, I've ever come across. You really think knowing the reason why we were getting the belt changed you really think it changed anything do you really think it stopped that reckless behavior for longer than maybe a few days maybe and in those few days what you would have is a whole bunch of festering anger and as an act of rebellion becoming more reckless all right Proper labeling did nothing. Just like properly labeling and being more specific for what the device is using for, being used for, solves fucking nothing. Okay? And even what these doctors suggest, like, like, but if it, if it looks like you're going to have a behavior do you understand or comprehend what the jrc considers behavior until you bring your foot down on some things for the love of god folks 
this device should not be used. Period, period, period. I don't care if they held a satanic seance in the middle of the gymnasium floor. Okay? I don't care. I don't care if... I don't know. I don't care what they do. Medicine is supposed to be do no harm. You say, but, 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 it causes less harm than if they were to get aggressive. Are you fucking kidding me? Did I stutter? Corporal punishment, curbs behavior, all of five minutes. There is no, there is no permanent change of behavior. And it can't, folks, because punishing the behavior does nothing to address the underlying things that is causing that behavior to come to fruition. What is difficult to wrap your brain around here? The punishment model needs to be eradicated entirely from mental health, disability, developmental care, all of it. Because punishing someone over behaviors that we can't control because you can't be asked to do your job and figure out what is triggering those behaviors is how we continue to end up in this ongoing, never-ending circle. Meanwhile, more kids are traumatized. Okay? There's no labeling that's going to fix what those devices do. It's not going to take away the second, the third degree burns. It's not going to stop them from shocking someone into catatonia again like they did to Andre McCollins. It solves none of the issues that the FDA has brought up. Nothing. Legitimately nothing. We're going to close on that one, folks. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. You know the drill. Please don't forget to hit the like button. Hit subscribe. Please don't forget to hit those comments. I appreciate your time tonight. As always, folks, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. I'll see you again here in a few minutes. Bye-bye, everyone.